so uh, we have seen uh, what are the uh, parameters such as strength and ductility to measure from elastic uh, engineering stress and strain let's look at some other parameters which we can measure using the uniaxial tensile test so this is a, a stress strain curve engineering stress strain curve for a ductile material whereas denotes uh, engineering stress and e denotes uh, engineering strain so we have seen that uh, ductility is a strain till factor okay so we can see that uh, the material fractures over here and when I find out the strain corresponding to it, it is a, a measure of ductility that is strain to fracture. Similarly, the strength, uh, yield strength or uh, UTS, it's an ability of material to resist plastic deformation. So we have seen that UTS is somewhere here, okay, sorry, uh, yield strength is somewhere here and UTS is the maximum strength uh, demonstrated by a material. So they, re they represent an ability of a material to resist plastic deformation. So now uh, there is another term uh, called stiffness, which is nothing but a slope of uh, this SE curve in linear elastic region. Okay, so this is uh, a linear region of SE curve and the slope of it is a stiffness. Basically, it is nothing but equal to Young's modulus. Okay, so uh, so the, what is uh, why we need, need these two different terms okay so when we correlate uh, Young's modulus uh, so when, when we talk about Young's modulus we are correlating uh, your engineering st stress to engineering strain and then I talk about yeah, Young's modulus okay which is nothing but the slope of this SC car okay when I talk about an ability to resist elastic deformation, that time I use the term stiffness. Okay. So stiffness uh, and uh, uh, Young's modulus are mathematically equal, but uh, when I talk about ability, I, I, I term it as, as stiffness. So there are other parameters such as toughness, which is nothing but an energy absorbed uh, per unit volume of a material till fracture and it can be given uh, as an area under the stress strain curve. So this is an area which I have marked which uh, identifies toughness of a material. More the area, more the uh, more uh, the tougher, more uh, tougher the material. Okay. So as I said, it is an area under the stress strain curve. So it can be uh, the toughness can be related as stress into strain. So the uh, the units of this toughness will be newton per meter square but we don't write it as a newton per meter square we do some adjustment so i write it as uh, newton meter upon meter cube and newton meter is nothing but joules okay it's the force into displacement gives you a joules okay so joules per meter cube is a unit of toughness now uh, resilience so resilience is defined as energy absorbed per unit volume when deformed elastically Okay, so toughness was an area uh, under the curve when uh, area under the total is stress strain curve. Okay, so that uh, gives you from elastic to plastic region. But resilience is the energy absorbed in an elastic region. Okay, so this is this is the area uh, which uh, identifies the resilience of a material. So more the resilience, that means it shows the more the ability. Uh, uh, of material to absorb more energy during an elastic deformation. So it is useful in some applications such as mechanical springs. Okay. So now uh, we have seen uh, yield strength, ultimate tensile strength. Now let's understand what happens beyond ultimate tensile strength. Okay. Uh, so we have seen that at a above UTS there is a naking happening. Okay. So let's uh, let's understand it somewhat in detail so we have uh, engineering stress strain curve you have a UTS marked over here so uh, as I mentioned in my earlier lectures uh, that from point from here where the plastic deformation begins to UTS there is a uniform uh, decrease in a cross-section area okay uniform delta a decrease okay 
till UTS. Okay, this is, I have marked over here uh, gauge marks, and you can see the cross section area is uh, decreasing uniformly. Okay, so it decreases uniformly uh, throughout this uh, 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 gauge marks. Okay, but as soon as I reach UTS, okay, at this point. Uh, this cross section area so there is a geometric constriction which happens okay locally locally there is a decrease in a cross section area i call it as a initial nicking okay now at this point when i reached at this point i don't need any load okay i don't need any load uh, further load to cause deformation no further increase in load to have delta L increased. Why is it so? Because the cross section area is decreasing and which causes the deformation to get localized. So I have a localized deformation. Localized deformation. So this neck is nothing but a region of instability. Why I am calling it as instability? Because there is no need to increase load to develop further strain. So I can see that from UTS to fracture, there is no further increase in load, but there is an increase in strain. So strain increases. Okay. So material is still deforming, but I don't need an extra load to deform it. So this is why I call this region as instability. Okay. This is a region of instability. So cross section area decreases and deformation gets concentrated in the neck region uh, and uh, it leads to fracture. Okay. So what is happening here? Uh, the deformation gets accumulated in this uh, region and there are creation of voids. Okay. So you can see that there are some creation of voids which then merges to form crack okay and then then that that crack propagates okay and that leads to fracture of a material so you have void formation over here you have void coalescence which they uh, combine and form cracks and this crack then propagate okay because this crack acts as a, uh, a region of stress concentration and then ultimately material fails this is what the typical a uh, phenomena which occurs during making of a uh, uh, ductile materials. So after void formation, uh, you can see that uh, there is no constancy, uh, a volume constancy which is maintained. Okay, so you uh, don't have this to be followed after UTS. Okay, that is a volume constancy. Now, uh, let's see uh, how different material behaves. Uh, let's understand their uh, different, uh, let's, un let's understand their uh, engineering stress strain curves. Okay. So I have a stress versus strain plot. I have, uh, we have seen this for uh, ductile metals or alloys. Uh, this is another material which shows a higher strength, which shows a higher strength as compared to uh, this material. So, uh, this I call it as A which is a low strength and high ductility. So you can see that it has a low strength. Uh, the measure of strength is UTS uh, or yield strength. So it it shows both low yield strength and high uh, or low UTS as compared to uh, B material. But it shows a higher ductility which is a, a strain to fracture. So A is a low strength and high ductility. B is high strength but low ductility. Uh, so typically A materials are ductile materials like aluminium, copper, B are something like high strength steel or spring steels. Uh, then you have this typical stress strength curve. So this is, is shows two yield points. Okay, you can see here there are two yield points uh, marked over here. This is one and this is second. Okay, so this is called as uh, this is typical behavior of a uh, low carbon steel okay which shows upper yield point and lower yield point we will be dealing this why low carbon steel shows 
uh, upper yield point and lower yield point when we discuss about dislocations in our course. Okay, so you have upper yield point, you have lower yield point, and this is a typical behavior of low carbon steels. Then there is another stress strain curve which doesn't show any plastic deformation or a very little plastic deformation. Okay, it just deforms uh, or fractures just immediately after an elastic region. Okay, I call this as a brittle material. It shows no plastic strain. So these are uh, shown by ceramics. Okay, ceramics have very little plastic strain. Okay, or very little plastic deformation. So how to define a material to be uh, ductile, brittle, or what? So there is there is no such rule, but a uh, criteria can be set in where the strain to fracture. Okay, we can define as EF. Uh, as a measurable con measurable thing uh, which uh, distinguishes material into ductile and brittle okay so when i say ef is less than or equal to 0.1% i call it as brittle materials when ef is more than 10% or close to 10% i call it as ductile materials okay and when ef is greater than thousand uh, percent I call it as superplastic materials we will be discussing about superplastic materials when we are talking about creep deformation so I I stop it here